Westfield Middle School. This is Alexis Norris reporting from the Cloverfield News Studio. Cloverfield News is a quarterly news podcast of the Journalism Club of Westfield Middle School. Actually, this program took a break last year and we are back this year. And I'm Colin Albert. We will be covering the news from the City of Westfield and WMS. Today's video reports were created by the first quarter communications classes. We will look at some stories of local citizens' memories of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. We will hear about a special project in the Holocaust that the language arts classes participated in this year. We will learn about a new facility opening up for the Hamilton County Humane Society. Then we will look at some fun things we can do over winter break. Things we can cook and things we can go see. Things we can listen to. Let's get started. Every generation has a moment that defines them. For our parents, it was the explosion of the space shuttle Challenger. For our grandparents, it was the Kennedy assassination. For our great-grandparents, it was the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. This past quarter, three girls from Ms. Johnson's communications class went to downtown Carmel on September 11th to ask people what they remember about that day. So where were you on the day of 9-11? I was in Wisconsin. Um, I had been driving to work and heard about the first plane that hit um, the first tower. 9-11, I was at working at, the, at, at a law firm in downtown Indianapolis, and uh, we, everybody, after the first tower got hit, everybody stopped working and just rushed over to watch the TV, and so we were watching the, the television when the second tower got hit. So how did, how did you react being so young? Um, I knew that a lot of people were in danger. That was kind of like what I understood at the time, so it, like it upset me, but I, I didn't know enough about like what the trade centers were to um, react, you know, like as an adult probably would. Uh, well, at first I thought it was just an accident, and then while I was watching, I saw the second plane go in, and you knew it wasn't an accident. It was the first time I'd ever experienced anything like that. Never been in a war, never had anything like it. And so it was scary. It was really scary. Yeah. And, and how did you react? It was just audible gas and people were crying and it was, it was pretty traumatic. Uh, someone at, uh, came to the bus stop that I was waiting at. We were going to the Grand Canyon that day. Oh, wow. And so we, we went to the Grand Canyon and it just doesn't seem like, you know, it was just, everything was just overshadowed that whole day because of what happened. And then, you know, you're seeing this beautiful Grand Canyon and you're really not really paying attention to it. And everybody is talking about what happened. And then somebody came into a gift shop out there and one lady just went off on him because he looked Middle Eastern, probably it wasn't. It was your people that did this, and it was just, you know, so it was a, it was a weird day. Um, did it affect you personally? It did. Um, I was definitely became more active politically after that. Um, actually uh, was on the campaign to get President Bush reelected because I wanted to do something, and, and he was in the mix of it, so I wanted to make sure he stuck around. I, I guess I was just in shock. Uh, I couldn't believe what I was seeing with my own eyes. Uh, and then they kept showing replays of it over and over again. And we, I finally had to walk away. I just couldn't watch it anymore. Um, I, I can't say personally I had anyone involved or that I like, you know, knew of anybody in the area at that time. Um, but, but, but growing up, I would say it's affected me personally in that way to think of like that thread is still there. Yeah. Did you know anybody that was involved? In the yeah, I did. Yeah, because I grew up in the New York City area. So I lost some friends. Personally, jeez, uh, 9-11 had a huge effect on my life because I'm a pilot. Uh, so I had a job, went away. My wife was working, she's a journalist, so her job changed immediately. Her, she was changing jobs already, but they wanted her back. They, her new job wanted her there like that. We were getting married, so uh, a lot happened that. <laughs> that was a busy month, yeah. <clears throat> I was in England which is where I'm from. Oh, that's, that's, that's an interesting perspective. So, right. um, like, how did you find out? I was actually, I went back to college as an adult and I was at college, mm -hmm. training to be a speech therapist. And we were kind of on our lunch break in the cafeteria 
and everybody was talking about it. All of the lecturers and all of the students and cell phones were still pretty new then. So we hadn't seen any pictures, yeah. but everybody, as soon as they got home, was looking at the news and it's just absolutely devastating. I literally walked into the office, opened my computer, and you know, all this stuff was streaming in about it. About it. So how new did, news feeds. How did that make you feel? Pretty, it, was, it was pretty weird. We were just absolutely shocked. You didn't know what to think. The replay of the plane hitting the building, it was just everywhere. Everywhere you looked, you could see it on every screen. 9-11, bad day. Yeah. Yeah, bad day. This year, the language arts class did a special project about the Holocaust. They each had a topic to research and write about and ended with a virtual reality experience. Clarissa Pasakua and Shannon Mayhew reports. At Westfield Middle School, eighth grade students will be educated about the Holocaust. During September, they will be writing essays about a designated topic relating to the Holocaust. In October, students will learn about a Holocaust survivor, Eva Kaur, through virtual reality. In this activity, they will see locations such as the concentration camps and learn about Eva Kaur through her speeches. We interviewed the Stingray's language arts teacher, Ms. Thomas, about the essay and virtual reality activity. Just 80 years ago, um, it hasn't been that long, and it really not only teaches them about history, but teaches them about our compassion for others and um, stepping up for others and, and things like that. Well, as they say, if we don't pay attention to history, it can repeat itself. Um, and it's, it's important to honor uh, not only the victims, but the survivors of the Holocaust. And so that's one of the reasons why we study it and learn it, but also to make sure that we behave as human beings in a way that would not allow something like that to ever occur again. They're all interesting topics. Um, some of them had picked out ones that then got taken, so then uh, they were upset. But I think once they got into their topics, they realized that they all held their own um, as far as interest and relevance to the Holocaust. Uh, I think some of the challenging ones had to do with the um, founding of the Israel state and how that related to the Holocaust, and then the concept of nationalism, too. Well, we're really excited about the virtual reality um, that's going to start with two of the teams this week and then continue with the other two eighth grade teams next Thursday and Friday. So first we're going to learn about Eva Kaur and the virtual reality is based on her life and, and the documentary that was recently completed. She was a twin during the Holocaust and spent time at Auschwitz where they conducted the twin experiments. And then she um, ended up in Terre Haute, Indiana uh, with a family and after that she started to have questions about what happened. Toward the end of her life uh, created a campaign about forgiveness uh, to others, not only about the Holocaust but just in general. And so the virtual reality is based on her time in Auschwitz and her life and so as we put on the headsets we'll be transported to Auschwitz uh, modern day, what that looks like now and we'll be around the barracks and then also I think by the um, cattle cars that delivered uh, the people to Auschwitz, the prisoners uh, with the deportation to so bring a lot of this um, to life in a way as we study the Holocaust. I learned so much about the Holocaust when I went on the field trip to Washington, D.C. over fall break. One of the places we went to was the Holocaust Museum. It was especially moving. 
the thing I remember the most was the boxcars. The idea that so many people were crammed into them not knowing what was going to happen to them was very moving. They must have been so afraid. I also remember the shoes, hundreds and thousands of them left over from people that were killed. Wow, that is really sad. Our next report is more hopeful. Santi Ruby went to the ha Hamilton County Animal Shelter to see how they were taking care of homeless cats and dogs. Hamilton County Humane Society is an animal shelter that takes in animals all over Hamilton County to find them homes for 375 or more animals. Hi, I'm Jennifer Hatcher. I'm the Community Outreach Manager for the Humane Society for Hamilton County. This is Lady Nemo. She's one of our adoptable cats. She is part of the survivor program, meaning that she received emergency life-saving care. Her front right leg was recently amputated, totaling about $600, which is all funded through our survivor program. Um, mission of the Humane Society is saving lives, educating communities, and completing. Well, we always are in need of donations like blankets, towels, food, um, but one of the biggest things that we need is funding, so monetary donations because those help fund surgeries and animals in need. Ways to help the Humane Society Animal Shelter is by donations for surgeries and medicines because this is a nonprofit group that don't always have enough money to help animals. Sure, well, there's actually a really big event coming up in Westfield on October 26th called Barktoberfest. It's a large fundraiser for the Humane Society. Um, everyone is welcome. There's a silent auction, there are dog costume contests. So we have a new facility site located at 106 and Hank Road in Fishers. The new facility will be about eight times as large as our current facility. It will have uh, more adequate ventilation for the cats to keep them from getting sick as opposed to our current facility. It will have more room for our cats and dogs. Um, the dogs will have dedicated runs. The cats will have access to windows and therefore sunshine. And overall, it'll be better for the health and welfare of the animals. Santi is joining us in the studio. What was it like filming at the Humane Society? Oh, it was fun filming there. I remember thinking about the animals. Uh, <clears throat> thinking about the animals, they don't have that much room. Okay, let's just pause. Um, let's just take a look at the again. Yeah. Okay. All right. There's All right. redundancy. I forgot to look at Just give okay. them a... We'll cut that part out. Santi is joining us in the studio. What was it like filming at the Humane Society? It was fun filming there. I remember when thinking about the animals, they didn't have much uh, room in the facility where they lived. Uh, the staff worked really, really hard, and they would have two or three c cats in one crate sometimes. Uh, they were bonded, and that's what they call when they take care of, of each other, almost like a family. I'm glad to hear that they were building a new facility. What have you learned about the Humane Society since creating this video? They will be having a groundbreaking new facility in March with a completion uh, scheduled in 2021. It looks really cool on the website. Every season they have a fundraising event. I made a video in October so they were promoting the Halloween event. And now they have a holiday for Paula Dyes. Ornaments is the idea you purchase an ornament in a memory of someone special, a furry or a human. Also, they have a junior uh, volunteer program for kids 12 through 15. So if you want to help give out by giving time rather than money. Thanks, Santi. Winter break will be here in two days. What are you going to do over break, Ella? I will do the Christmas thing. Presents, shopping, and food. I think I'll go see Jumanji too. Good idea. Actually, there are several really good movies coming out, or already out. Actually, Little Woman and Cats opens Christmas Day. Little Woman might be good, but Cats looks kind of weird. I guess it was a popular Broadway play years ago. Spies in Disguise also opens Christmas. It might be funny. If you haven't seen Frozen 2, I think it's pretty good. Of course, everyone is going to see the next Star Wars. At least that's one I will see. You know what else is 
Do you know what else we like about December? Parties and the food that goes along with them. This next report includes a recipe you can use to bring your next, your next pitch in. We're gonna use, hi, welcome to our video. <laughs> um, in this video, we're gonna be teaching you how to make the TikTok dessert. We hope you enjoy. Okay, so like, basically we're gonna use brownie mix and these Oreos. We're gonna use some olive oil to spray our pan with Pam. And for the brownies, like that goes in the brownie mix. Yes, and then this goes into the brownies. We're gonna use a measuring cup. Yeah. Two measurement thing. And some spoons. And two eggs. And some chocolate chip cookie dough. And some pans. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. You gotta spray your pan with Pam, okay? Then you gotta take your cookie dough, put it in there. You wanna tap the cookie dough into the pan. Now that you have your cookie dough in the pan, you're gonna wanna take a package of Oreos. You want to line the Oreos up on top of the cookie dough like this. Okay, now that the Oreos are in the pan, you're going to want to make your brownie mix. And you need water, vegetable oil, and eggs to make it. And a bowl and a spoon. Okay, then you pour one fourth cup of vegetable oil. Okay, you add one tablespoon of water. And then a half a tablespoon of more water. More water. Okay, then you gotta mix it like this. And then after you're done mixing some of it, then you have to crack your eggs. First, then you pour it in the oil. You want to spread it around. Now you put it in the oven after it's been preheated, usually on the middle shelf, and you're going to want to cook it for 30 to 40 minutes. When it's done baking, you need to take it out of the oven cautiously and set it somewhere to cool down for five to ten minutes. Cut it into triangular shapes like this and then put it on a plate and you can add ice cream and chocolate syrup if you want. That looked good, but it also looked like a thousand calories a slice. This is not something I'll be telling my wellness teacher, Mrs. Donathan, I ate over break. Let's eat it and not tell either of our wellness teachers. Allie is joining us to tell us about a new project she and her friends are working on. We are beginning a podcast for the students. It's called the Student Voice Podcast. We are trying to give a voice to students ideas and concerns. It's an audio extension of the Cloverfield News. We will send out the latest link. We will send out the link to the latest broadcast over the social media. We are currently researching an audio site to host us. Can you just put it up on YouTube? Actually, no. YouTube is only video. There are audio sites like SoundCloud and Speaker, Spreaker, but most of them charge money to host it. We are recording now. Each Wednesday after school is the plan. We hope to have guests on, so if you want to participate, please contact Ms. Johnson and let her know what you want to discuss. We will try to get you scheduled. That sounds great. Keep us posted on how we can listen in. Well, that's all for today's broadcast. We have looked at some disturbing times in history, the 9-11 attack, and the Holocaust. We heard about some encouraging work that is going on at the Hamilton County Humane Society. We know which movies to go see over break. And something we can eat and listen to. That is all for Season 2, Episode 1 of Cloverfield News. 
Join us again in February for episode two.